everyone, hello, hello, and welcome back to our Christian Witchcraft Discussions. I know that we usually have our Angel or Saint of the Month at this time of year, but rather, I would really like to talk to you about something that maybe you didn't consider doing, that maybe you would like to do, and that is making a circle, protective circle, with the angels. So this month we kind of already had our foray into uh, you know, St. Bridget and all the wonderful things that she is, that she was, that she did. And so we kind of already got a little bit of our Saint of the Month, didn't we? But that's why this time I would like to invite you to understand a process known as casting a protective circle with the elements, or rather the archangels that watch over the elements. If you've ever heard of casting a circle, you might associate it with Wicca in which these Wiccans will call on the four elements, the four directions, right? South, North, East, and West fire, air, water, earth, and they'll do all of this stuff to cast their protections in order to make sure that their spell work doesn't invite spooky things in, and also so that, you know, they're cleansing themselves of any impurities or any bad energy and getting themselves in the focused mindset to work. Here's the thing, though. Even among Wicca, the place of origin of something like this is actually more in basic mysticism, and specifically in the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn um, was kind of a Kabbalistic with a Q society. They pulled on a lot of different stuff, Hermetic Kabbalah, um, kind of really in everything but the kitchen sink mysticism, where they would kind of take from Jewish Kabbalah with a K, they would take from Egyptology and like, you know, Kemetic uh, ideals, they would take from Greek ideals like Hermes Trismegistus and the Emerald Tablet. They would take all these different pieces and kind of hodgepodge them together into one group which would come to inform many other things later on, right? So in their inception in about the 1700s, they would just they would just inform a lot of people, and especially a lot of modern New Age stuff like Gerald Gardner's uh, structures of Wicca. And one of those things uh, that they would do is called the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram. And the thing that's really interesting about that Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram is that it does exactly what I mentioned. In Damien Equals High Magic, which admittedly is very full of Kabbalistic things that if you are not Jewish really are not uh, are not awesome to dabble in if you're not actively working with the Abrahamic God are really not things that you need to concern yourself with but nonetheless are still things that trace back to an origin we can understand and he says it as much himself in the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram this serves many different purposes and those purposes are to clear your mind to shake off any nasty old energy you might have been carrying around, to set your space and protect yourself, and to keep other entities outside of your space. Here is something that uh, maybe people don't tell you. I remember hearing about this way back in my witchcraft journey, but a lot of people don't talk about it anymore. But essentially, when people begin to really understand, grasp, and use their magic, something will happen where entities, parasitic ones, that look for that energy like they, you know, an ant looks for sweets, they will follow that energetic signal and they will find you. If you are not, you know, doing your proper protections, especially in the first few months, it, it's potential, you know, to lure in some kind of odd, mucky little spirit and cause a bit of a problem, right? Something that just kind of leeches off your energy and leaves you really tired and exhausted. If you ever hear those, you know, ex-witches turned Christians, they'll say they felt tired all the time, they felt drained, and it's like, well, were you keeping the spirits out? <laughs> the ones that are looking for a free meal? Because frankly, I mean, it's the same thing as saying, oh man, in the first few months of dropping chocolate all over my floor, I kept noticing there were ants everywhere and I just didn't know what to do. These parasitic spirits are the exact same things as the ants that kind of smell something sweet when you drop something on the floor and come to take and investigate it. If you don't want that, what do you do with the ants, right? You sweep them out, you get rid of them, and then you wash your floor. That's exactly what the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram does, just on a spiritual level. If you notice you're being drained all the time, that there is some weird spirit around, Lesser Banishing Ritual is the thing that sweeps them out of your house and washes your spiritual floors, right? Nothing to worry about, but just something that you gotta be aware of, especially if you're just starting the magic. But in that Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram, there's something really important that happens, and that is the evocation of the four Archangels of the Cardinal Directions. Each and every one of these angels we have already talked about a little bit in this uh, series here, you know, an Angel of the Month and Saint of the Month, and those are Michael, 
Gabriel, Uriel, and Raphael. Here in Damien Equals Angels and Archangels, you learn quite a bit about them as well as, you know, what direction they're in charge of, uh, what element they're in charge of, things they can help you with, so on and so forth. And I know that me personally, um, as someone who's really not interested in Wicca, the idea of casting a circle uh, with the elements, especially the ways that I was being told by Wiccan sources to do so, just felt inauthentic and strange to me. I didn't really get why I had to call on the elements, I didn't really get why I had to do that, I didn't understand um, that it was coming out of the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram. I didn't know any of these things, so I just kind of never did it. And thank god I never really had any problems, mostly because, uh, you know, god is the gatekeeper of my space, and so on and so forth. But it definitely is something that had I known about these angels and their functions, I could have just asked them for help instead. I could have called on these four angels and said, hey, will you please, you know, come from this direction, from that direction, and, you know, of this element and that element, and please guard my space, you know, from all corners, from all angles, keep me in a bubble of protection, right? Would have been very easy to do. What I did start doing instead was saying the Lord's Prayer, which is, in my opinion, something similar, right? It does all the same things that Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram does, just without the elements, because, frankly, even if I wanted to take these four angels, I don't really understand uh, the reason to invoke elements in the first place. When I say the Lord's Prayer, which everyone knows, of course, this prayer is something that, again, right, keeps me spiritually refreshed, cleanses off any negative energy, gets me in the meditative mindset, signals to God that I'm trying to get his attention, and that, um, you know, I could use his attention and his eyes on me for a second, and also is protective, right? It invokes the presence of the Lord, and there is nothing... There's no dumb little ant spirit that's going to come running around and trying to leech off of literally the god of all that is. That would be a bad idea for it. However, when you do have tools like the Angel Tarot that also give you, you know, those four cards. As you can see here, for example, right, we have Gabriel's card with these sigils and things. We have Michael's or Raphael's. We have Uriel's and Michael's. So yeah, we have all four. If you wanted to, you know, either find their sigils online and write them down, or put them around yourself and, you know, say, asking God for these four to come and guard your space from each corner, all sides. Absolutely, that is something you could do. If that is something that gets you more in the zone to do, by all means do it. And this is kind of the important part about magic, right? For me, it is enough of a cleanser, a banisher, um, and a focuser to just do the Lord's Prayer, even if I'm saying it really fast. The second I say that prayer, I know I'm exactly where I need to be. But if you are someone who takes longer to get into something and you want it to feel more official, you want to have something a little bit more intricate, there's a lot of things you could do. Start one with these four archangels asking God to let them, you know, stand in the bounds of your space and create that barrier. Second thing, again, is the Lord's Prayer, and then you can move on even to other Catholic things like the Rosary. If you want to get into a meditative state, and kind of put yourself in a small bit of a trance, the rosary is a fantastic way to do so because each one of those beads on the rosary represents another Hail Mary or some kind of prayer, and then you spend some time contemplating the mysteries, so on and so forth. It just takes any other thoughts right out of your brain because you are focused on that prayer, those repetitions, that meditation, that contemplation, and reflection. So once again, if there were elements of Wicca that made you uncomfortable, but that made some kind of sense to you and you want to do it in a more Abrahamic, you know, Christian context, there is absolutely a way to do that, and that is with those four archangels, Raphael, Gabriel, Uriel, and Michael. With these four, you can absolutely still uh, recreate, in your own words, however you'd like to do it, some kind of prayer or blessing to set your space with these archangels who represent a direction, who represent an element, so... Raphael is air, Gabriel is water, Uriel is earth, Michael is fire, right? You can absolutely still do that, you can make it your own, and that's what's really important with anything you do on your magical path, is making it your own. If you guys had not heard of that yet, I hope that this was helpful for you here, otherwise I will see you guys next time for some more discussions as we get deeper into the spooky season. See ya! By the way, if you want to see these videos two weeks earlier, consider subscribing to my Patreon, where you not only get all these videos, but also recipe cards, uh, specific deity profiles, and lots of other interesting things to look at. Video tiers start at $10 a month, so definitely consider checking it out.